All right, we are going to talk today about solving multilinear variable equations. Multilinear variable equations. That's a lot of information right there. Multivariable means many. You're going to have an X, a Y, and a Z. <clears throat> Not everything will have an X and a Y and a Z, but you could have up to three variables. Linear means all of your variables are to the first power. So we're not going to deal with anything squared or cubed or anything like that. Everything is going to be to the first power. We will get to a point where we start off with a set of linear equations like this. And we <clears throat> somehow algebraically move it into this, which is called row echelon form. But we're not going to do that today. What we're going to do today is learn how to solve using back substitution and to determine if something is a solution or not. So what are some things that we really need to focus on, right? These problems are not difficult. They really aren't. But there are some little tiny tricky things that could make, could, could cause you guys some problems. The first thing I would suggest is that when you are given a system of equations, I would make sure that all of your X's are on top of each other, all of your Y's are on top of each other, all of your Z's are on top of each other, then you have an equal sign and you have your constants. That's what I would do. <clears throat> I would also, you're going to have some on your homework, I think, and some on your quiz probably, where maybe one equation has an X and a Z, but it doesn't have a Y. That doesn't mean there's one Y. That means there's no Y's or zero. So write down zero Y or zero Z or whatever. So you have placeholders for everything. I think that's probably a good idea. Right? Everybody understand that? When you write your answer, when we had an X and a Y value, we wrote our answer as an ordered pair. It was like X comma Y, right? Well, now we're going to have three variables, so we'll have our answer written, and it's called an ordered triple. You have your X value, your Y value, your Z value. It goes in alphabetical order. So if your ordered triple, say your answer turns out to be 1, 2, 3. That means the X value you found was 1, the Y value you found was 2, and the Z value is 3. So writing your answer like that, and then if somebody wrote it like this, those two things are not the same, right? You can't just randomly put the numbers in whatever order you want and just say, well, I had the 3. It has to be in the right spot. So you have to have your X value that you found first, the Y value second, the Z value third. Okay, so two things we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> Solving when it's in row echelon form. It's called like a stair step pattern. If I gave you guys this problem and did not explain anything to you, I think most of you could solve this. How would you solve this to find out what X equals, Y equals, and Z equals? Would you just put like holders? You could put in holders, yep. You could put in like 0X here. You could put in 0X, 0Y, good. Then what would I do? Plug in what? The Not the ordered pair. What do I know for a fact? I know that Z equals 2. So how could I use that information to find out what another variable equals? Mm -hmm. I could plug it in right there, right? And then once I do that, what do I find out what, e what equals? I found out what Y equals. Then what could I do with that information? I could plug in my Y there, my Z there, and figure out what X equals, right? That's called back substitution. You're working backwards. <coughs> it's in kind of a stair step pattern. Three, two, one, that sort of thing. Now, when you go to solve, guys, this variable right here, it doesn't always have to be Z. It could be X or Y, whatever. It has to be positive, right? And the leading coefficient needs to be one. So if there was like a two in front of that, you would divide both sides by two and get Z equals one. Wait, so Z has to be one? Whatever the variable is, that's by itself. It has to be a positive one. So you want it to say either Z equals or X equals. I'll show you some examples. But like if it said 2Z equals 4, how would you solve that to find out what Z is? You would divide both sides by 2. So you'd get Z equals 2. And then you could go plug in. <clears throat> you always want one variable by itself, positive, with 1 as the coefficient. Now once you get your answer, what can you do to make sure that you're right? You can plug it back in. Take two seconds, plug it back in. Because, guys, these questions aren't terribly difficult. 
But if you miss one negative sign and you tell me that X is one when it should have been negative one, well, that's gonna really mess up the entire problem. So just take your time. I would tell you to check your answers. So you're gonna have a couple questions that are written like this in row echelon stair step form. It says solve using back substitution. Then you're gonna have some where I give you the equations and you have to tell me if the ordered triple is a solution or not. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, fractions are fair game. You should not get a really gross fraction, but you know, you might get three halves, one third, something like that. You might have to use fractions, but you won't get anything like negative 923 over 117 or something like that. <clears throat> okay, sound good? All right, I'm gonna change the order after I do this problem. I'm gonna change the order of the notes. I'm gonna do the solving first and then go back to the other one. So you'll just see that in the video. But again, if I have this question, it says solve the system. My answer should be written as X comma Y comma Z, right? You gotta get to that point. If you just leave random X equals Y equals Z equals and you don't tell me it in an ordered triple form, I'm gonna take points off. So the way that you would show me your work, guys, I'm gonna say, okay, look, I know what Z is. I'm gonna plug it in right here. So Y plus four Z equals seven. I'm gonna plug in two. So y plus four times two equals seven. Y plus eight equals seven. <clears throat> Subtract eight from both sides. And y equals negative one, agreed? Okay, fair enough. Now I'm gonna take the top equation, x minus two y plus three z equals nine. I always rewrite the equation that I'm gonna use just because like in this case, notice y is negative. But in the equation, it's negative. So some of you are going to want to skip steps and say, oh, two negatives make a positive. Again, I don't think it's a good idea to skip any little steps because any tiny mistake will make a big deal. So I'm going to say x minus 2 times y is negative 1 plus 3 times 2 equals 9. Now, if my equations weren't written x, y, and z, I personally would rewrite them because you don't want to make a silly mistake. But negative two times negative one is x plus two, plus three times two is six, equals nine. <clears throat> two plus six is eight, so x plus eight equals nine. I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides, and I get x equals what? One. one. How do I write my answer? One comma nine, one comma two. Perfect, one comma negative one comma two. Everybody see that? Questions? I would. That's just me, though. That's just, that just kind of helps keep everything in order. <clears throat> All right, now again, I'm skipping to the solving at the end. <coughs> I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but I'm skipping to the solving. So it says solve using back substitution, right? Your answer as an ordered triple. That means x comma y comma z. So I know, guys, right off the bat, I don't have to do anything. I know that z equals what number? Eight. Eight. So I'm going to say, okay, y plus 2z equals 6. Plug in 8. So y plus 2 times 8 equals 6. y plus 16 equals 6. Subtract 16 from both sides, and y equals what? Negative 10. Negative 10. Good. So now I know what y and z are. I can figure out what x is. <clears throat> so 2x minus y plus 5z equals 24. So 2x, we don't know what x is, minus y, so minus a negative 10, plus 5 times 8 <clears throat> equals 24. 2x minus a negative is plus 10, great. 5 times 8 is 40 equals 24, good. So I have 2x plus 50 equals 24. Subtract what? 50. Subtract 50 from both sides. 2x equals negative 26. So what does x equal? X equals negative 13. Good. So x is negative 13. So how do I write my answer? Negative 13. Negative 10. Positive what? 8. 
Now, if I was like, oh, I just want to super duper make sure I'm right, what could I do with those three answers? Plug it back in. Plug it back, in. Plug it back into the top one, see if it all three work. Question. All right, how's this one a tad bit different? It's not just Z by itself, right. I needed to say Z equals or X equals or Y equals just one letter by itself, positive with a coefficient of one. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four here. And I found out that Z equals what? Three, okay, good. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it right there. So I'm gonna plug it into the negative two Y plus three Z equals one equation. Negative two Y plus three times three equals one. <clears throat> negative two Y plus nine equals one. Subtract nine from both sides, correct? Mm -hmm. So negative two Y equals negative eight. What does Y equal? Mm -hmm. Y equals positive four, good. Now I know what Z and Y are. Let's figure out what X is. So I'm gonna use the top one, seven X plus two Y plus two Z equals 21. So 7x, I don't know what x is, plus 2 times y is 4, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 21. So <clears throat> I have 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 times 3 is 6, equals 21. 7x plus 14 equals 21, right? Add the 8 and 6. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. So 7x equals 7. What's x equal? One. x equals 1. Now, if you left your answer like this, say this is a 20-point question, because, you know, it's a little involved, I'd take off at least five points, because your answer needs to be written as an ordered triple. Your x value, your y value, and your z value. You see that? <clears throat> All right, let's look at 6. How is 6 a little different? I have a negative z. Guys, very easily you could say, oh, okay, z equals negative 2. And then you plug in negative 2 for z. You'll get an answer for y. <laughs> then when you plug those two back in, you'll get an answer for x. But will it be the correct answer? No. So that's why I tell you, when you're solving these, the best thing to do is when you get to the end and you get your ordered triple, plug it into the top one to make sure it works. But here I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And I get z is actually what value? Z equals 2. Good. So we're going to take that and put it right there. So y plus 6z equals negative 1. y plus 6 times 2 equals negative 1. y plus 12 equals negative 1. <clears throat> Subtract 12. And y equals negative 13. Good. Very good. So now I know what z is. I know what y is. I'm going to take those two values and plug it into the top equation. So x minus 2y plus z equals 4. I don't know what x is, but minus 2 times y is negative 13 plus z is 2 equals 4. Negative times a negative is a. So plus 26 plus 2 equals 4. What's 26 and 2? So x plus 28 equals 4. Subtract 28 from both sides. And what does x equal? Negative 24. negative 24. So your answer would be negative 24, negative 13, positive 2. Is that okay to get big numbers like that? Sure. <clears throat> Could you get a fraction? Yeah. Sure. Could you change it to a decimal? Sure. Is there an example like a fraction or something? Um, I'm sure I have one somewhere. But yeah, you might get a fraction. Questions. All right, the other type question that you guys are going to encounter is something like this. All right, they gave you the three <clears throat> equations and they gave you an ordered triple. You have to say, yes, this works. No, it doesn't. You just plug in. You plug in. Now, guys, you have to be careful because there are situations, <clears throat> happens more often than not, where you plug in and it works, the solution works in two of the equations, but not all three. It has to work in all three. So don't just plug it into the first equate, the first, you know, the first, and be like, oh, it's fine. You have to plug into all three to make sure. 
But your answer to this question is a yes or no. But you have to show all of the work. And I'll show you what I'm expecting to see from the work. Because I know a lot of this you can do in your head. I don't want it in your head. What I'm going to caution you is the first thing you need to do is make sure your X's are on top of X's. Y's on top of Y. Z's on top of Z. If it's not, there's two things you can do. You can either A, rewrite it like that. Or B, just make a note. So when you go to plug in your X value your Y value and your Z value, you put them in the right spot. Because what could happen is that say that first problem went Z then Y then X. If you're not paying attention, you'll plug in the wrong value for the wrong variable and then you won't get the answer correct. So just make sure, so I'm just saying pay attention. So what I would like to see is, okay, look, I'm gonna see if this first equation is satisfied with the order triple that they gave me. So I'm gonna say X is one, so I'm gonna say one, y is 0, so minus 3 times 0 plus 2. Does that equal 3? That is what I am trying to prove here. Now, that's pretty much all I need to see. You guys can go through and simplify. I have 1. What's negative 3 times 0? It cancels out, right? So plus 2. Does that equal 3? Yes. What's 1 plus 2? Three. Does 3 equal 3? Yes. So that one works. Good. Can I just now go, oh, okay, this one's, this one's fine. No. no. I have to now plug into the next equation all three variables, all three values, and see if it works or not. So x is 1, 2 times 1, plus y is 0, right? And then our z in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, is 2. I need to substitute in those values to see if it makes the equation true. So 2 times 1 is? Two <coughs> plus zero. Do I need to write that? <coughs> no. So the negative five and two is minus ten. Does that equal eight? What is two minus ten? Should be negative. Sorry. What's two minus ten? Negative eight. Does negative eight equal negative eight? Yes. Okay. Good. Let's do the last one. X minus y plus three z equals seven. So again, x was 1 minus 0 plus 3 times 2 equals 7. 1 minus 0 is just 1 plus 3 times 2 is 6 equals 7. Does 7 equal 7? Yes. So the answer to this question, is the given ordered triple a solution? You would say yes. That yes or that no means absolutely nothing if you don't show the work, that you proved it. Not just, oh, I did it in my head. <clears throat> yes, sir. So if there was, like, no, like, x or y, then just, like, 3z equals 7, could you just, like, put, like, if they give you, like, the word pair, can you just plug in that c or no? You can only plug in for whatever value they gave you. So, like, in that, yes, in that case, if it just said 3z equals 7, then you would just plug in the 2 mm -hmm. where the z is because it's in the z part of the ordered triple. Gotcha. <laughs> Whatever it corresponds. Mm -hmm. All right, let's verify. Let's check number 2. My x value is negative 3, my y value is 1, and my z value is 6. Again, you don't make sure either all of them are in the same order or you pay attention that I have to put x value for x, y for y. If it's not written in standard form, I would rewrite it, but if you don't, just make sure you don't make any silly mistakes. So I'm going to check the first one, 4x plus 8y plus z equals 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 3. So 4 times negative 3 plus 8 times 1 plus 6. Does that equal 2? What's 4 times negative 3? Negative 12. Negative 12 plus 8 plus 6. Does that equal 2? What's negative 12 plus 8? All right, so negative 12 plus 8 is what? Oh, that's negative 4. Right. Negative 12 plus 8, right? Negative 4 plus 6. And then what's negative 4 plus 6? That's still a positive 2. Does 2 equal 2? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Guys, you always want to do order of operations. I know that 8 plus 6 is 14 and then negative 12 and 14. But always do order of operations. So we're good there, first one. All right, second one. I have x plus 7y 
minus 3z equals negative 14. So I have negative 3 for my x. What was y? 1? Yeah. And then 3 times 6. Does that equal negative 14? <clears throat> negative 3 plus 7 minus 18. Does that equal negative 14? What's negative 3 plus 7? Positive 4 minus 18. What's 4 minus 18? Does negative 14 equal negative 14? Yep. yep. All right. Can I just go? Yeah, this probably works. Correct. You guys say, yeah, it probably works. And you guess right. That's great. You're getting points off because you didn't prove that all three work. So I have 2x minus 3y plus 2z equals 3. Make sure I rewrote it correctly. <clears throat> right. And you ordered triples. Negative 3, 1, 6. So 2 times negative 3 minus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 6. Does that equal 3? What's 2 times negative 3? Negative 6 minus 3 plus 12. Does that equal 3? What's negative 6 minus 3? Negative 9. Negative 9 plus 12 is what? Three. Does 3 equal 3? Mm -hmm. So my answer to this question is yes. yes. Did you put this, so there is a solution? Again, are they all going to work? No. no. <laughs> Don't just assume that they are. All right? You might get a version on your quiz where you have three of these questions and all three of them don't work. <clears throat> don't second guess yourself. My suggestion to you is as soon as you get something that doesn't work, I would recheck just to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. As soon as one of them doesn't work, you can stop. So here, this is my X. This is my Y. This is my Z. Somebody asked me last period, what if I start with the bottom one? That's fine. I don't care what. You guys have to check all three. They have to, it has to work in all three. It doesn't matter. You want to start with the bottom one? Start with the bottom one. I just always go in order of everything. <laughs> so X minus Y plus Z equals 2. So X is negative 4 minus a negative 3 plus 4. Does that equal 2? Mm -hmm. Negative 4 plus 3 plus 4. What's negative 4 plus 3? Negative 1 plus 4 is what? I know this sounds silly, but actually write it out. It says 3 equals 2. Is that true? No. no. Right there, you could say, oh, this is not a solution. You can write, it's not. That ordered triple is not a solution. It's not that there's no solution. That's just not the one for it. <laughs> I'm going to continue and go through just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. You can go back and look at your work and see if you made a mistake. But there will be, there can be instances, guys, where you plug numbers in and it works in two of the equations, but not in the third one. Or it works in one of them, but not the other two. That means it's no solution or that it's not the solution for that problem. So here I have negative 8 plus 3 minus 4. Does it equal negative 6? What's negative 8 plus 3? Negative 5. Does negative 9 equal negative 6? No. no. All right, you want to check the last one just to be super sure? Perfect. 2x plus 2y plus z equals negative 3. <clears throat> what was it again? Negative 4, negative 3, 4. Mm -hmm. So 2 times negative 4 plus 2 times negative 3 plus 4 equals negative 3. So negative 8 minus 6 plus 4 equals negative 3. What's negative 8 minus 6? Negative 14 plus 4. What is negative 14 plus 4? Negative 10. Does that equal negative 3? No. You guys understand? Yeah? So your homework tonight. All right, which I'm going to go over tomorrow with you in its entirety, just to make sure we're on the same page. You guys have two different types of questions. You have questions that are written in row echelon, that little stair-step formula. We're going to use back substitution and tell me what the ordered pair is. And then you have somewhere you're practicing, is this a solution? And you have to plug in to all three to tell me yes it is or no it's not. Yes, ma'am. Okay.
All right, we're good? Okay.